Well, hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Today is June 16th, 2022. I'm only kidding, Gail. How are you? How's everybody? Welcome to the Promised Bible Devotional. Um, it's actually Thursday, and I'm off today because we've had some a little bit of a situation. And uh, I'm hoping Carol will come in here. She can kind of tell you what happened. So this is going to be a combined video, okay? Does that sound good, William? This is going to be combined. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a hundred this week here in Charlotte. It has been hot. As a matter of fact, um, we had to take uh, Harley down to the vet to get an allergy shot because he is absolutely miserable. And uh, out on the back deck, uh, which is in the shade now, uh, my thermometer was reading 111, Gail. <laughs> You're not going to get that in uh, Long Island. It was 111. And Pops, it's probably 110 at your house. So you want to tell the, the crew what, uh, what happened? On Monday with my car? Yeah. Oh, oh it's thunder now. Um, yeah. I was driving home from work and it was very hot. It was probably 95, 96, and my air conditioner just died. Just on 77. Yep. And it just died. And then I, mean, I thought it was making a weird noise and I pulled over and I called you. Yeah, and I'm at work. So it's like, you know, you, you only call me when there's like a uh, devastation and panic <laughs> stuff ha taking place. Like there's a snake in the garage. It's like, <laughs> I'm at work. What do you want me to do? Well, I didn't know if I needed a... Luna's got a rabbit. What do you want me to do? I didn't know if I needed to stop driving it because it was making a noise and it was hot and I was sweating. Yeah. My clothes were all stuck to me because I was in my work clothes. Yeah. But... So, not a good time to be without without air, but what what did I do this week? I, I took the car to work, didn't I? It was hot coming <laughs> home, man. It, it's like old convertible days with all the windows down without it, with a top on top of it. But anyway, it was, uh, yeah, it's pretty, been pretty miserable. Luckily, I, I made an appointment to see one of my buddy at work. His, uh, he's got a guy that, uh, he's got a guy. You know what I'm saying? He's got a guy. Did I say that right, Gil? He's got a guy that does cars, and he only works on Hondas and Toyotas, so that, that's pretty cool. So, $828 later, Dad. Yeah, that, that's a big one to bite off, but old compressor decided to be kaput. So, time to move on. Put some AC on it. Car's been a great car. So, it's actually 10 years old now. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, that's pretty happening. All right, were you ready to start? Yep, happy Father's Day. Yep, happy Father's Day. I didn't even write that on here. I forgot. <laughs> Bye, y'all. All right, see ya. Happy Father's Day to everybody on Sunday. Hope everyone has a good day and, uh, and all the good stuff that comes with it. So, uh, continue prayers on the prayer list for Dad and for Gail. Gail's getting close. It's coming down to the time. Uh, continue prayers for Mary and for Wayne, for Kyle for safety at work and uh, his peeps at work. Uh, for my cousin Scott, my Aunt Judy, Morgan and Jordan. Harley's itching. Uh, continue prayers for Roger. Uh, after heart valve replacement, Mr. Cavallin family and Brandy uh, should be getting some test results back from the doc pretty soon. So I'm looking forward to hearing from her. Um, what else do we got? Katie, uh, baby coming in August and her grandma KK. Uh, continued prayers for the continuing continuation of mass shootings that are taking place in this country. Uh, continued prayers for Ukraine and for all of Europe. And gas now is at 4.59. I know it has reached over $5 average here in the United States, which is just unbelievably uh, unbelievable to me. And, you know, there, there's a lot of factors that cause $4.59, $5 gas. And, yeah, it might be record profits, but that's one small part, Democrats, of the whole thing. Got it? So it all of it comes together to make it do that. So with all that being said, why don't we just go ahead and we'll get, we'll get uh, opening prayer going and and we'll get into this. So, Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for today. We thank you for this time today, together, Lord. I thank you for this church family that meets each and every week. Uh, I thank you for the word that you give me, the, the way that uh, you, you have us uh, in this season of time, opening your word and reading your recorded history lesson for us, your recorded word. It's history. This is a book that is alive, that applies to us even today, even though it was written 2,000 years ago. We thank you for your son, Jesus and we thank you for always loving us and accepting us and forgiving us. Lord, I pray that this message will go forward. It's a straightforward message this week. There's, there's not a whole lot of turns in, in this week, but it's straightforward. And uh, we glorify you through that. Thank you for the example that you've given us uh, in your word. And uh, may this speak to someone this week. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
You guys ready? Yes, I am off today. I've been in my bathing suit all day. I had a good workout this morning. <laughs> and it's too hot to go to the pool, so I've been inside all day. Yeah, that's right. And Mary, I am drinking my afternoon coffee, so it's this is going to get good. Hold on. And we got a storm that's in the area, so I'm hoping we'll get a little bit of rain and cool this place off. So, anyway. Last week, we were in Exodus 8, which brings us, Uncle Jimmy, to Exodus chapter 9 this week. Okay? So... Last week, it was a fun week last week, wasn't it? We had some good word in there. Frogs, gnats, and flies. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what's happening. Last week, frogs, gnats, and flies. The three plagues that God released on Egypt and, the, and Pharaoh. Uh, three more chances to repent and to let his people go. My dad once said, it's easier to keep a car, a clean car clean, right? Absolutely. A hard heart is hard to break. And we're getting that example right here through Pharaoh. Pharaoh is standing firm in his decision. God is in his mercy, will again give Pharaoh a chance to repent, but it also comes, right, Gail? It also comes when you have a hard heart and you stick with your decision. Maybe that's you being bullheaded. Maybe that's you being whatever. You're gonna continue doing what you're doing. When we go to this place, like Pharaoh is seeing now, pain and suffering is to come. And he is definitely seeing that now. And to top it all off, to top the top here, the land of Goshen, where Joseph put his family during the famine many years before this, this is the land of God's chosen people, and they were being spared of God's plagues right before their eyes. God was sparing his people. There was a division. There was a separation so that Pharaoh would know. The people of the kingdom would know that God was real and God was over their gods. And this was taking place. Let my people go. Mm, wouldn't happen. Only Pharaoh and the people of the kingdom were being exposed to God's judgment here again and again. And Pharaoh's heart continues to be hard. But it's by his choice. We all have a choice. And it's by his choice that he is suffering for, you know, through this and his people. And then God said, let my people go so that they may worship me. So let's open up Exodus 9 and begin in verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, here he is, talking to Moses already. Go to Pharaoh and say to him, this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says. Let my people go so that they may worship me. Nothing new here. He's selling him something plain and simple over and over again. Let my people go so that they may worship me. Verse two, if you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them back, the hand of the Lord will bring a terrible plague on your livestock in the field, on your horses, on your donkeys and camels, and on your cattle and sheep and goats. We're getting specific here. But the Lord will make a distinction again a distinction between the livestock of Israel and that of Egypt so that no animal belonging to the Israelites will die. This is huge. This is big. The kingdom is large. The kingdom is big. Um, God's mercy with another chance for Pharaoh. Let my people go. God clearly telling Pharaoh the people of Israel was not his. It was God's. And God tells Pharaoh another plague is on the way. And again, Israel will be spared. Like I said, this message is pretty straightforward for tonight. Verse five, the Lord set a time and said, tomorrow, everyone say tomorrow. Tomorrow, the Lord will do this in the land. And the next day, the Lord did it. All the livestock of the Egyptians died, but not one animal belonging to the Israelites died. Verse seven, Pharaoh sent men to investigate and found that not even one of the animals in the Israelites had died, yet his heart was unyielding. I love that word, unyielding, and he would not let the people go. The goddess of the cow, right? That's what we're talking about here. God's talking over top of the other gods. There are plenty of gods to choose from in, uh, in Egypt. And we need to get to Pharaoh's heart. And the only way to do that is to knock them off one at a time. I am uh, power and authority. God is showing him. The goddess of the cow, His name, her name is Hathor. God shows a direct hit to the god of the cow. The cow to the people of Egypt in this time represented the god 
of fertility. And God shows Pharaoh the people, his authority and power. Again, God chosen people. And with this promise, this was spared. Not one animal died in Goshen. Let's continue. Verse eight. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, take handfuls of soot from the furnace and have Moses toss it in the air in the presence of Pharaoh. It will become fine dust over the whole land of Egypt and festering boils will break out on men and animals throughout the land. So they took soot from the furnace and stood before Pharaoh and Moses tossed it in the air and festering boils broke out on men and animals. Boils, a plague without warning. He didn't tell them this time what was coming. It was coming and God unleashed it. There was no heads up this time for Pharaoh. There was no way to worm his way out of this. Skin, right? We're talking about skin here. Swelling, it's painful, it's inflamed. It's almost, a boil is almost like it's on fire. And both people and animals are inflicted with this. There's no easy way to find comfort with boils when your skin feels like it's on fire. There is nothing that you can do. Pain and suffering, chosen. Verse 11, the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. They got it too. They could not stand before Moses because the boils that were on them and all of the Egyptians, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not listen to Moses and Aaron just as the Lord had said to Moses. So even the magicians were stricken with the boils. The God of medicine, this is what we're talking about. God shows the people his authority and power. Power. Pharaoh is still owning his decision and standing firm with a hard heart is showing his disobedience. Right, Gail? It's disobedience. Just as the Lord said to Moses, all of this is in God's hands. This is the plan here. Verse 13. Then the Lord said to Moses, get up early in the morning, confront Pharaoh and say to him, this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says, let my people go so that they may worship me. Again, with the same message. It's simple. Or this time I will send the full force of my plagues against you and against your officials and your people. So you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. That's awesome. I love that. For by now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague that would have wiped you off the earth. Mercy, but I have raised you up for this very purpose that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Are you excited about that, Aunt Sharon? I'm excited. I'm not excited saying that. That's awesome. Verse 17, you still set yourself against my people and will not let them go. Therefore, at this time tomorrow, here's the promise. This time tomorrow, I will send the worst hailstorm that that has ever fallen on Egypt from the day it was founded till now. This is the big guy. This is the big one. Big guy, right? Right, Gail? Give an order now to bring your livestock and everything you have in the field to a place of shelter because the hail will fall on every man and animal that has not been brought in and is still out in the field and they will die. Verse 20, those officials of Pharaoh were feared. The word of the Lord hurried to bring their slaves and their livestock inside. But those who ignored the word of the Lord left the slaves and the livestock in the field. God tells Pharaoh who he is and shows him, my power and my name be proclaimed in all the earth. That's the mission. That's what God is wanting here. This is disobedience from attempt, of attaining this. God so far is sparing Pharaoh and the people of the kingdom. His mercy with another opportunity to turn and repent. And we're still here. Pharaoh being hard-hearted isn't accomplishing anything, right? I mean, think about this. What is he really accomplishing by staying hard-hearted and not letting his people go? He, he's going backwards. He's not going forward. He's not helping his people none. He's not helping his situation any. Pharaoh being hard-hearted isn't accomplishing anything. We all can relate to this, all of us. We don't have to stay in the ring with Rocky to take a blow after blow after blow, right? Everybody's seen the movie Rocky. Listen, God is for us. He is with us. He is for us. He's not against us. A hard heart hurts us and those around us. 
It hurts all of us in the decisions that are being made. Another blow to the gut. Another one. Another one. You stay in there. You're standing strong, right? You're, I'm, I'm staying in this thing. In our thinking, we stay. We choose. We endure. We go back for another blow, this time to the face, right? We're hanging in there. We're getting mutilated here. This is what's happening. God is for us. He is for you, Uncle Jimmy. He is for you, Mr. Cavalli. He is for you, Gail, Dad, Mary, Wayne. He is for you. Kyle, Maddie, Morgan, Jordan, all of you. Listen, God is for you. He is on your side. And isn't it true that sometimes when we are like Pharaoh, standing strong in our decision, we go back to our relationship, we go back to this work, we stay too long here, we do this and we do that, and we have insecurities and we have these things in life that we just drag around with us, this hurt, this um, things that have happened to us, the decisions sometimes that we've made on ourselves or someone else, the addiction. And I'm not even talking like a drug addiction, like you're smoking crack or something. I'm talking about maybe you're 150 pounds overweight and you're addicted to food and it just didn't happen, just one puff and, and you're there. This has taken over a whole lifetime, right? These are the decisions. God is for you. God is for us. God sends Pharaoh the worst hailstorm in all of Egypt since it was born, since it became a nation. And God blessed it. Egypt for this amount of time, right? Because he knew that Joseph was going to be coming. He had to save his people. He had to have a distinction between his people and the rest of the world so that God, everyone would know who God is. No force on earth is more powerful than the weather. I'm, I'm a big weather guy. I like the weather. I, I understand weather. I, weather channel is happening. It's a lot of drama in weather. Weather drama sells, right? People stay tuned with what's going on, right? And it's news too. It's the same old stuff. Sometimes fake. <laughs> yes. Hail, lightning, wind, rain. It's coming. <sighs> 22. Let's go. We can do this. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward the sky so that the hail will fall all over Egypt on men, on animals, on everything growing in the fields of Egypt. Highlight that in your Bible because that's extra. Everything growing in the fields of Egypt. Mm. When Moses stretched out his staff toward the sky, the Lord sent thunder and hail and lightning flashed down to the ground so that the Lord rained Hail on the land of Egypt. Hail fell and lightning flashed back and forth. It was the worst storm in all the land of Egypt since it had become a nation. That's bad. Verse 25. Throughout Egypt, hail struck everything in the fields, both men and animals. It beat down everything growing in the fields and stripped every tree. No leaves on them. The only place it did not hail was the land of Goshen where the Israelites were. See, this is an added layer of pain. Gail, don't miss that. It's an extra layer of pain. Everything growing in the field. This was going to have a long-term lasting effect, right? Just like our economy right now. Just like the decisions that this government is making, that this leadership is making. There's going to be lasting things that take place. Yeah, it hurts right now, but just, <laughs> just wait. This would produce a longer duration of suffering for the people and this decision. The goddess of the sky... God shows his power and authority. Verse 27. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron. This time I, I have sinned, he said to them. The Lord is in the right and I and my people are in the wrong. Pray to the Lord for we have had enough thunder and hail. I will let you go. You don't have to stay any longer. Hmm. Yeah, we, we listen to that sometimes, don't we? We, we? That's what we want to hear sometimes in life, right? And somebody says what we want to hear and we believe them, right? We go back, we do this and we do that. Uh, we continue picking up where we left off. We forgive the person and continue on. But listen, this is an example here. When Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron, this time I have sinned, he said to them, the Lord is in the right and my people are in the wrong. Pray to the Lord for that we have had enough thunder and hail. I will let you go. You don't have to stay any longer. But Moses replies, when I have gone out of the city, I will spread out my hands to the prayer of the Lord. The thunder will stop and there will be no more hail so that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But I know that you and your officials still do not fear the Lord your God. Mm. He already knows. He knows this. 
He is in tune. Can you see Moses' faith still growing? He is in tune with what God is doing. He knows. He knows the character of God. He knows the steps that are coming. That, that's all about faith. That's our journey. That's, that's, our, that's our, our, our uh, what is it? That, that's our object of faith, right? To be in tune, to be in step with what God is doing. We know what's going to happen next. We can see what's going to happen next. So the flax and the barley were destroyed since the barley had, he- had headed and the flax was in bloom. The wheat and the spelt, however, were not destroyed because they ripened later. Now, there's a reason why that's in there. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But anyway, if you, go, if you know what it is, you tell me. How's that? Verse 33. When Moses left Pharaoh and went out to the city, he spread out his hands toward the Lord. The thunder had stopped and the rain no longer poured down on the land. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and hail and thunder had stopped, he sinned again. He did it again. He and his officials hardened their hearts. So Pharaoh's heart was hard and he would not let the Israelites go, just as the Lord had said through Moses. That brings us to 10. See, Pharaoh, repent, is in his head, right? But God's not after that. God's after his heart. And if he's not going to repent and he's not going to turn from his sins in his heart, you're not there yet. He isn't there. Pharaoh is not there yet. God knows and Moses knows that Pharaoh yet again won't keep his word. With a little bit of relief now, right? The storm and the hail has stopped and Pharaoh moves on. His heart is still stubborn. And that is an example for many of us today. We say we're not going to do that. We say we're not going to go back. We say we're going to quit this job because it's a toxic place and we're going to get a new job someplace else. So we're not going to give up on a family member or maybe we are. I don't know. Whatever that is that you have that you're struggling with. Maybe it's something that has happened to you. Maybe it was a decision that had no control. Maybe somebody walked out on your life. Maybe somebody had, had passed away. You've got this hurt that's there. And maybe, you, maybe you're in a place where you're angry with God and you're here for a reason just to know, hey... Do I have to stay this way? Is there a way to, to come back? Is there a way for, for me to repent and not be gone for so long? God's given Pharaoh a lot of chances here. And there's a big one that's coming. And Lord, we just thank you for this message, Lord. We thank you for the repeated effort that you give Pharaoh and the people to show your power and authority and who you really are. Lord, I love that example about this. Even though Pharaoh's decision is causing pain and suffering, a lot of suffering, the animals that have died, uh, all kinds of things that we have talked about here, and now, and now this. And Lord, help us understand this. Help us apply this lesson uh, to our lives today. And Lord, maybe we're in a place right now where we've already made that decision. It's not too late. You don't have to sit and continue to eat out of the pigsty. We can get up and go back just like the, the, the prodigal child did. And he went home. And his dad was waiting for him, open arms. Good to see his son again. Lord, that's you. That's us returning home. Lord, I ask that you would give someone out there the courage uh, today to be able to do that. And come back to you. Lord, we love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 23 minutes in today, guys. Storm's about to hit. I'll get this baby uploaded, and you guys will be watching it when I guess it's already uploaded. There you go. So um, I hope everybody has a good week. Stay strong. Stay healthy. Stay well. Stay smart. Make good choices. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our country as this country is uh, taking, taking some weird turns here. So peace out. Love you guys. Hang in there. Just like that guy last week, I will not forget that guy. Love y'all.